Hey foodies, Miguel Everett Walker here and welcome back to The Best Bite. This is the show where we talk about food, life, and the experiences that they have in between, right? The connections that lie in between the reason we eat, why we eat, and what we eat. And today I am in lovely Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I'm very excited to do this episode with you. I have been having so many cravings lately, and that's what today's theme is about. It's all about cravings. And uh, I needed very much, I was craving to have a lot of space. The episode we did before was about, or oh, a couple episodes ago were about breath and needing to make sure we were taking time for ourselves. So we talked about the good foods that help with really great lung capacity and oxygenation of the blood and also making sure to do breathing exercises so that those two can marry really well. So you were eating well, enjoying your food, but also having lots of air, right? You're really um, inhaling, exhaling, good, healthy vibes. Um, so not to counteract the good, but a lot of times we have cravings. And so I wanted to read to you what WebMD describes as cravings. And it says that a food craving is an intense desire for a specific food. This desire can seem uncontrollable. I'm sure we can all relate to that. And the person's hunger may not be satisfied until they get that particular food. So let's relate that back to life in general. Have you been having cravings? What kind of cravings? Other than just what you want on your taste buds. I know for me, I've been craving to have um, a vacation. <laughs> so I made sure that to make that happen for myself. And I am in this lovely space, this lovely kitchen, this lovely city. It's very charming and it definitely um, helped quench the thirst for needing new environment, new territory, an adventure, all of that stuff. But what I was craving literally in terms of that food, for some reason you think you go to Tennessee, you'd want barbecue or chili, or you'd want steak. Something that Southern food um, really sticks to, stick to your ribs kind of food. And I, for whatever reason, was just craving and still have been a black bean burger. I can't tell you why, but that's just what's been on the tip of my taste buds this entire trip, the entire week. So I decided to make that happen. I reached out to some of my connections and they were saying, meh, you know, you can get a standard run of the mill black bean burger. Um, so I thought, you know what? I better just make it myself and talk about this whole cravings theme. So that's what we're gonna talk about. So stay tuned. So you can see we have all of our ingredients here. Uh, we're gonna use our black beans, our jackfruit, and as you can see, I picked a jackfruit that had a mixture of chickpeas, spinach, garam masala to go along with it. I think that's gonna marry really well together and really add to that craving and add to just a nice flavor palette or uh, create a nice flavor palette. Uh, <clears throat> but I noticed that these would both have a lot of excess liquid. So obviously when you open the beans, you wanna drain off the excess liquid, but um, really just the two of these together would still be kind of runny. So in order to thicken it, I wanted to add some oats. This will not compromise the flavor profile whatsoever, but it will give it a nice thick um, consistency and give your burger more shape and more body. To that, we're gonna add some hot sauce. Use whatever hot sauce you like. As you probably know, I like Cholula. She's my favorite. And then just a little bit of cayenne pepper in that mix. <clears throat> I've already mixed mine up. So this is what we have as a nice uh, thick consistency here. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is spread it out. That way it's much easier just to score here. I'm gonna just take probably this entire half. We have our pan heating here, medium high heat. I've already added some olive oil. And we've also oiled and greased the bottom of a clean pan. That way we can add this to the top to do as a press. That way we can give our burger more body and shape. Let's get it in here. So I'm gonna use a spatula to help shape it. And as you're cooking this, if you wanted to score it in quarters so you have smaller burgers, you certainly can do that. The buns I got are pretty large, so I wanted to make sure I wasn't putting a small burger in the middle of a whole lot of bread. I hate when there's too much bread, so. So we have our kind of basic burger-like shape. Let that sit there for a little bit. Okay, 
and now we press. Okay, so we have that beautiful patty, like consistency and shape. The other thing that's really nice about this, I just realized I don't really have a super flat spatula. Uh, so trying to flip this might be a bit difficult. So what I'm gonna do is flip it this way. We have that nice crust on the bottom there. Got my finger, you probably saw that, saw me pull back, ouchy ouch. Get a nice little press. And then same thing on this side. And before I mention about three to four minutes, let's make that probably two to three minutes. It won't take long. And again, you really only need medium high heat. It does not need to be on high heat at all. You don't wanna risk this burning and you don't want your oil to burn either. Okay, so while that's doing its thing there, to accompany this dish, I have some delicious sweet potato wedges. This is something easy you can do on your own. Uh, I wanted this to be just kind of a fast meal. Again, I'm on vacation. I didn't really want to overwork myself. It was really about the creativity of making this craving happen, but I love um, fries or something of that nature to accompany usually any type of burger dish, whether it's meat or vegan. Um, so I got some sweet potato fries. These have been <clears throat> dressed with a little bit of rosemary, olive oil, and salt and pepper. And I'm just gonna pop these in the oven. This is at 350 degrees. We're gonna let them sit in there for a good eight minutes so they get nice and crunchy on the outside, <clears throat> but are still uh, yummy on the inside and not too dry, of course. That burger's coming along nicely. All right, foodies, our bread is ready. I know it's gonna be hot, so I don't wanna burn myself. Let's get these pieces of bread out here. So I, on the bottom part, this is what I like to do, dress, I'm just gonna throw my leafy greens on the bottom here. She had some pickled radish, that would be really good. Trying to make sure it all gets on there. Okay, let's get our patty on here. Well, there we go. Just for a little extra tangy, this is just what I want to do. You can skip more hot sauce. There again, there's hot sauce in the mixture. <clears throat> Let's get some wedges of avocado on here. Try to cut them nice and flat. Okay. And just a little bit of barbecue on the top. Yum. There we go. Oh, yum. Oh, whoops. Okay, and then let's add some of these yummy wedges. As you can see, yes, I have apples on there. The apples I'm using as my palate cleanser. And I think the tartness, that crunch and tartness will be a good um, change of pace. <clears throat> Why did I do that? I meant to unscrew this because I also want some of this barbecue sauce on my wedges. Now you can put this in a separate dipping bowl if you're fancy. I like to just kind of get right on there. I mean, again, vacation, right? And there you have it. Pretty as a picture. Hey foodies, here we are with our finished dish. Let's take a look. Yum, yum, yum. You 
again this was all about cravings right so we before we actually started making this dish it was very simple we just took some black beans a packet of uh, I, I almost always say star fruit I meant to say jackfruit they don't taste similar at all but black beans and jackfruit this particular uh, packet of jackfruit had some a really yummy um, Indian style chickpeas and masala mixture in it um, and then to thicken it, we added just plain oats and some, you know, some spices, seasonings, a little hot sauce, salt and pepper, that kind of thing. I use cayenne this time around, just give it a little heat and some fun flavor. Uh, and then I accompanied it with some sweet potato wedges, a little rosemary, olive oil and pepper on top. And then a palate cleanser, just a simple um, red tart apple, nice and crisp, a little juicy. Uh, that way, <clears throat> I can really give you a definitive taste between the difference of the sandwich and the wedges here. Um, but before I give the taste, before I give literally the best bite of this dish, um, let's talk a little bit more about cravings. So before WebMD explained cravings to us as something that um, <clears throat> is a desire for a certain type of food, right? And sometimes it's uncontrollable. So. I know when we're talking about things like dieting, ugh, dieting, right? Dieting and eating right, that you are trying to train your brain not to crave certain things. But I'm trying to dig a little bit deeper than just, oh, I crave ice cream, I wanna have ice cream, and if I have ice cream, I'm a bad person, or I'm cheating on my diet, I'm gonna get fat. Nothing like that. I was trying to dig a little bit deeper into the human experience, right? That's what the show's all about. And so really, I felt like I was just a little overworked. And I love my job. Um, I also love doing this, of course. But, um, you know, during this COVID time, Black Lives Matter time, there's a lot of stress out there. And I just needed a break. And so with that came a whole new series of cravings. Needing to breathe, needing more space, needing more creative time, needing to be away from people and at the same time needing to be around people as well but maybe just a different type of interaction with people and so where that ties in it also affects your brain and of course your brain's going to tell you what you want um, and give you signals and that will also dictate sometimes uh, the nature of what you want to eat or at least those cravings of what you may want to eat possibly not unlike pregnancy uh, <clears throat> i don't know that i can do the science on that for you today but there may be some sort of connection there with your emotional responses to stress, right? So <clears throat> why beans, black bean burger, that kind of thing? Well, beans certainly are a stick to roots kind of food. They are high in protein and fiber. They are excellent for you. They produce a lot of energy. And here I am running low on energy. So there you go. I needed to have not just an experience, a uh, spiritual and social experience on vacation away, but also making sure that what I was putting into my body also fit that category as well. So I've got some food here that really is going to fit that bill. It's gonna give me kind of a stick to your ribs feeling, but at the same time give me good positive energy, lots of nutrients, and fill me up with energy so that I can go back to work and be my normal live vibrant self, right? That's the idea. So <clears throat> let's take a look at what emotional, spiritual cravings may tell us about ourselves. Um, this is just from helpguide.org, and there's a little article here. I'm gonna get right to the point. This is about just emotional cravings. It says, craving is an overwhelming emotional experience that takes your body and produces a unique motivator of behavior, wanting and seeking much like a drug. So that's really interesting. Are you having serious cravings? If so, are you giving in? Do you feel guilty about your cravings? Are your, or are your cravings trying to tell you something deeper about really what you need? So again, let's go back to that whole cheating on your diet thing. Are you working really, really hard? Are you working out really hard or making sure to walk, eating less or eating right, changing your lifestyle habits with what you're eating, but you're still having some of those same old cravings? Is your body telling you you really want that ice cream or that kidney bar or is your body trying to tell you something else? So let this episode serve as a conversation to that deeper part, to a deeper part of that conversation with yourself. Try this recipe. Uh, let's take a look with our mouths at this point. Okay, so let's do the burger first. Mmm. Not bad, Miguel. That's really good. I've had a lot of black bean burgers. I love black bean burgers. I'm definitely gonna make this with jackfruit again. 
You can't taste the oats, but it gives it, it helped give it that body. Otherwise, you would have had just kind of a slushy mess. It was too wet on its own. The avocado is a nice, mellows it out, mellows out with the spices of the cayenne. And I definitely prefer that shard. It gives you a little bit of crunch, kind of like iceberg lettuce would or butter lettuce, but at the same time, just a little bit better. I like in that more earthier, richer, green leafy taste. And of course, that toasted pretzel bun does not hurt at all. Yum. I'm quite pleased. And I have to say, probably I'm having some sort of endorphin experience right now. Very satisfying. I'm telling you, cooking is the best art. Instant gratification. I mean, sure, if you're going to make a really huge dinner, you're waiting a couple of hours, but something really quick like this, you get to eat almost right away. So gratifying. Palate cleanser. A little apple. Okay, so now one of these yummy sweet potato wedges. Mmm. I mean, potatoes and burgers, right? Or potatoes and sandwiches, potatoes in any form. Definitely a great companion to the sandwich. I mean, I wouldn't know what to say. I can't really intellectualize it a lot more. Sweet potato fries are great. So getting a nice sweet potato spicy wedge is even better, right? Thank you for coming on this journey with me. What are you craving? Tell me in the comments down below. Please sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. You guys take care.